Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny Program, with his special guests, Dan Daly, Kirk Douglas, Fred McMurray, Tony Mar Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike Program. As you probably know, this is my second TV show of the season. And those of you who saw my first show two weeks ago will probably notice that, uh, that tonight I'm a little more at ease. You see, I'm, you know, uh, it's working up to a first show that makes you so nervous. The, the anxiety, you know, you worry about what the, what the critics will say. I mean, what they'll write about me and everything. Well, anyway, it's over and now I'm relaxed, you see. I, <laughs> I mean, the, the reviews came in, I read them, I burned them, now let's forget them. <laughs> Although I must say that I did get some very exceptionally good reviews on my first show. As a matter of fact, I saved some of them to read to you here from different towns that I, excuse me just a moment. These are contact lenses, lenses, you see. You, you keep the paper right up here. Right up here. <laughs> probably the silliest thing I'll say today. <laughs> but these reviews, here's one that I got from the bi-weekly chronicle from Storm Center, Iowa. <laughs> it says, on Jack Benny's first television show, once again, this master showman romped his way into the hearts of millions with his hilarious performance. Well, it's kind of nice, I think. And here's one from the Daily Bugle from U-Turn, Nebraska. <laughs> this is Jack Benny's first television show that has long been awaited by the citizens of U-Turn was welcomed with hearty laughs and much merriment. Here's one from the uh, New York Times. <laughs> now, here's one. <laughs> here's one from Whistler's Bend, Montana. <laughs> it says, Jack Benny, through the medium of television, came a rompin' and a stompin' into Whistler's Bend with a rootin' tootin' half hour of rip-roaring entertainment, Yahoo! <laughs> must be the name of the editor or something. <laughs> oh, here's one from the Chicago Herald American. <laughs> you know, I'm not one. <laughs> you see, I never like to, to influence critics. But I must say that 23 years ago, when I first went on radio, I was so anxious to get a good review in the papers, that I sent each critic a dollar. And after my first show, they were all very nice to me. They not only returned the dollar, see, but they send me bread and canned goods. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> but now tonight, getting back to my show tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you know, as, as uh, much as I enjoy doing this show, I am anxious to get home because tonight, at my house, I'm having what we call a jam session. See, we have a lot of fellows who live in, our, in my neighborhood, and we all play different instruments, you see, and we meet once a week. And tonight, we're meeting at my house again, you see, and I'm the leader of the orchestra. <laughs> and, uh, of course, when I was a kid, you know, I, I didn't know really, for my musical career, I didn't know which instrument to take up. So in order to, uh, to help my father, you see, I took up the violin because at that time my father had a combination tailor shop and gypsy tea room. <laughs> so I used to play and make a little money for him, you see, in between. But anyway, getting on with it. Oh, Don, Don Wilson, will you come out here, please? <coughs> Don. Don, did you, re uh, you know, did you rehearse, go through the number? that we prepared for the commercial, the one that I was talking about this morning? 
Jack, I've been thinking it over, and I feel the same way about it I did this morning. I don't want to do it. <laughs> what? What did you say, Don? I certainly don't want to do it your way. I won't do it. <laughs> Look, Don. Wait a minute, Don. You see, you have a contract with me, and you're supposed to do the commercial any way that I want you to do it. Oh, but, Jack, the whole thing is so ridiculous and embarrassing. Don, believe me. Will you listen to me? I've been in, I've been in show business many, many years. And I know that a commercial must be <coughs> unique and different and entertaining. Now, you go and get the props. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, I don't mind being a man being stubborn. But when he's fat and stubborn, <laughs> I mean, that's too much. I mean, I've had more trouble with Don over commercials. I've never seen anything like it. This All fellow will right, Jack. All right. Let's do it and get it over with. Don, it's a commercial. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Take it. Take it. If you want better taste, come and say the red. Must be striped. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Take it again. No, no, take it again. Tonight, a star is born. <laughs> With you, it could be the Big Dipper. <laughs> Mr. Benny. You know, I mean, you don't have... Oh, oh Mr. What? Benny, what? you want it on the phone. Here? Yes. Excuse me a minute. Yeah, run along, You can Jack. take it right okay. here, Mr. Benny. In the studio. Uh -huh. There you are. Hello? Hello, Hello Mr. Benny, this is Roger. Rochester, I'm right in the middle of a monologue on my show. What did you call me for? Well, I was thinking about your friends who were coming over for your jam session, and I was wondering what you wanted me to serve. Well, I don't know. What have we got in the icebox? Well, there's two turkeys, three hams, a 12-pound prime rib, and 10 pounds of imported caviar. Rochester, all that wonderful food in our icebox? Boss, we're on a party line. Let's impress them. <laughs> Rochester, prepare anything you want, or I'll be home at 8 o'clock. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, the boss sure gets excited about those jam sessions. Well, he said he'd be home at 8 o'clock. Yep, that's what he said, 8 o'clock. <laughs> Here I am, Rochester. <laughs> Did any of the gang get here yet? Oh, don't worry, boss. They'll be here. I'm just straightening up, fixing the music stands. All right, fix up all the music stands and the music. I want to tune up a little bit. I'll fix some sandwiches. Okay. <laughs> I can't wait. I've been practicing like mad. Mad! Yeah, well, me yeah. too. Good. Tony, what kind, what kind of a clarinet is that? 
I don't know, Jack. Must be a good one. I was offered about 150 bucks for it. Only 150 bucks? I was offered $3,000 for my violin. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Who'd ever offer you $3,000 for your violin? Everybody in the neighborhood chipped in. <laughs> You mean to tell me, Jack, when you play, everybody in Beverly Hills can hear you? Some of the money came in from Anaheim, Susan. <laughs> Roger, so will you do me a favor and go get the sandwiches? Yes. Please. Boy, boy, oh boy, I need a new read. And I feel awful dry, Jack. Real dry. Tell me, how's Mary? Oh, huh? she's fine. I haven't seen her for a long time. <laughs> Uh, Mary, Mary's gonna be on my show pretty soon. Yeah, you know? that's good. That'll be just great. Here, here comes somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I guess the gang is coming. Hey there. Hey, Fred! Hi, Fred. How's the wife? Hey, here. They're all in here. Say, Fred. Listen, Fred. I got a wonderful new arrangement for our number that we're going to do tonight. Well, you know, I hope we're so. practicing, yeah, and yeah. it's going to be a great part for the saxophone. Oh, good, I hope so. I didn't think I was going to get here on time, Jack. I was over at the studio, and somebody sent a script at the last minute. I had to read it. Not much good. I don't think I'll do it. What was the name of it? The Horn Blows at Noon. <laughs> <laughs> the Horn Blows at Noon? Yes, the Warner Brothers wanted to see what it looks like in the daytime. <laughs> Very funny, very funny. I thought so. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't have a chance to get lunch. Here, I got your part here for you. Oh. been here a little sooner, had a little accident. Did you get hurt? No, I got out of the car just in time, just in time. Why, what happened? Uh, my Jaguar chased an MG up a tree. <laughs> Everybody has to come in with jokes. <laughs> Don't rush me. I'm a little tired. Been okay. shooting all day. I want to relax a little bit. any part in it for me. I mean, this da-da-da-da-da-da-da. What kind well, of Fred, part is that? Well, Fred, no, that's, you see, that's background music when Tony Martin takes his solo. Tony has the solo? <laughs> I can handle it. <laughs> that's beside the point. What? The point is, Jack, last week you told me you were going to make a new arrangement and I would have the solo. Well, Fred, it, it you know, it just, it just didn't work out that way. I see. <laughs> Fred, what are you doing? I'm going home. <laughs> I'm a movie star, and I'm not going to be humiliated like this. Fred, Tony, you talk to him, will you, please? Now, listen, Fred, I know how you feel. You can have the 12 bar solo, but please put your horn together and join us. Come on. Well, all right. <laughs> I think we ought to play the arrangement just the way it's written. Look, Tony and I can handle this ourselves. Yeah, we don't need a dancer to tell us what to do, no. you know. <laughs> Thanks, Tony, you're a peach. <laughs> <laughs> Why, 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 Why,
Bradley, let's play something. For heaven's sake. Let's play anything. Jack, I got a yellow one. I got a prize. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I tell you, we're all here. I'll tell you who else is coming. I know it must be them. It's from my radio orchestra. Bagby and Remley oh, no. and John Rice and the whole thing. Come on in, fellas. I know who it is. Come in. Hi, Bagby. Hi, boys. Hi, Bagby. Hi, Bagby. Oh, he couldn't make it, Jack. You see, he lives in Hollywood, and you live in Beverly Hills. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, he can't leave Hollywood without getting permission from his parole board. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? Oh, don't worry, Jack. I called up another You man. missed the word parole at every rehearsal. <laughs> well, don't you worry. Well, who's going to play banjo? You got I, somebody? I called up another well, thanks. banjo player. Well, thanks. I'm going to play. Let's 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 play. came to my house to play bridge last week, yeah. you didn't tell me that you played banjo. Well, nobody asked me, man. Nobody asked me. Oh. Hey, Kirk, what do you got hanging on your back there? What's that? What's this? What's oh. this? Oh. You know, on the way down here, some crazy jaguar chased my MG up a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want me to do? Shoot it? <laughs> I thought you made up a joke. <laughs> I haven't seen you for a couple of weeks. Yeah. You, uh, you look a little heavy, like you put on some weight. No, I'm the same. My weight hasn't changed. It's always 180. Gee, I, I don't believe it. You, you look like you weigh a lot more than that. Well, I don't think so. I'll find out here. <laughs> 184 with banjo. What's it say on the other side? The other side? Bowling in the basement. We'll all go down that later. Yeah, well, let's play. <laughs> we, got uh, we got what kind of sandwiches are they? Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly. What happened to the hams, the turkeys, and the imported caviar? What? I'm on your party line. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, what's the difference? We'll eat later. Hey, Kirk. Oh, look, Kirk, come here. I've got the part for you right here. Here's your music for what we're going to play. Music? You know, I don't read music. All I can play is Bye Bye Blues. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we're not going to play Bye Bye Blues. We're going to play Basin Street. I don't know Basin Street. I tell you, the only thing I know is Bye Bye Blues. Well, for heck, we're going to play Basin Street. Then fake it. All right! <laughs> <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, if you think we played badly, how about Stanford yesterday? <laughs> Of course, I must say, you know, I, it was a shame that I had to pull the curtain down, you know, right in the middle of our number, but I had to do it before the commercial because I told all those guys this was a benefit. <laughs> Anything about it. But really, it was so nice of these fellas. Here are five big stars to come over here and really give their services. They came over here on my show just because they enjoyed doing it and had a lot of fun. So I'd like to bring them back again to take a bow over here. Come on, boys. to pay you all a compliment. You are the lousiest musician <laughs> in my life. But you know, I do think in all fairness, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that they did come here for nothing, to work for nothing. I do think that somebody... <laughs> yes, Fred, didn't you know about that? They didn't tell me. That. Oh, well. <laughs> I'm telling you now. <laughs> the only thing... I do think it would be fair if just, you know, if somebody went back with something. Now, I want you to forget that these are all big stars, you see. I want you to just consider them musicians, amateur musicians. Now, I'll hold some money. <laughs> I will hold a $5 bill over each one's head. And the Please. one who gets the most applause is a... <laughs> The one who gets the most applause will go home with the money. spectacular. <laughs> Every show has a spectac spectacular, so I thought I'd pull, put one on tonight. And uh, incidentally, in about... Um, have I got time to say something? Just a second, because I just wanted to announce that either in two weeks from now or in four weeks, we're doing our version of Cain Mutiny. <laughs> and our guest star is going to be Leo DeRocha. <laughs> Well, anyway, I will be back in two weeks, and be sure to listen to Watch and Southern next, next Sunday. Thank you. Remember one week from tonight on this same station, and Southern returns in Private Secretary. Jack Benny's next television show will be in two weeks. In the meantime, be sure to listen to Jack Benny on radio every Sunday night over the CBS radio network. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is Don Wilson saying, be happy, go lucky.